All right, so we are playing experimentally on a refined paint layer. And I'm just going to keep going that way. It's a lot of repetition in digital painting, for sure. Doing a lot of the same things over and over again until you get the result you want. And each time you build up texture, each time you build up a different approach, the benefit is that it each time you choose a direction to like move your stylus, it impacts the the finished texture of it. You know, like how things will look. When you print it out and you look up close as a as an art object, right? So right now at screen resolution, you know, from this distance it looks pretty good. Looks kind of chaotic and strange, but it seems like it's rational. But when I look up close to it, it's going to still feel very much like just regular pixels. Right? No one's going to confuse that for this kind of paint texture. And by creating a refined paint layer versus a base paint layer, I can adjust those things and we can even composite texture overlays and things to, to finish that that finish or to choose that finish in a, a more unique way. So I'm almost done with this layer. Now you can have as many refined paint layers as you want with as many different techniques and styles as you think are necessary. And the more you're free to kind of play with it, I think the more you'll enjoy it. Sometimes I just want a stronger color than I have, so I have to reassert it, like this purple. Yeah. So it's absurdity and association almost turning this into like a basic shapes primary puzzle is one way to be a little absurd with it. So if this was a regular painting, like an oil painting, I'm glazing over my sketch with a lot of crazy color, but at about a 70% transparency, even more than that with my wet edges turned on, which allows a lot to come through. Like it's only most opaque at the edge of each stroke, which is a way that uh, some types of brushes work.
And this is very much uh, French Expressionist kind of style of painting in terms of its color use called Fauvism, which appropriately translates in French to wild beasts. Because when critics saw the Fauves painters, when they were used to more neoclassical kind of academic artwork that was shown to the upper classes in the academies. They saw this kind of use of color and abstraction and said it looked like the work of wild beasts. And the Fauvist loved that. So probably the most famous Fauvist is, is Henri Matisse. So this was going on at the same time as Picasso and Brock were working on cubism just intentionally trying to mess with representational, traditional, academic methods of painting. So you're in good company and notorious company. I don't know if I would call them good, but very influential artists that sometimes did very bad things in their personal lives. So if I were doing this as a, an actual painting, and I like doing traditional painting, this would be a really scary thing to do. I would still think I'd be brave enough to do it, but when you're layering up on, on a painting on canvas, for instance, you can't easily strip that layer away. Where here, I can just turn it off and on and play with it in different ways. And I especially like this intentional kind of breaking up of the form where it's less interesting, giving myself a more interesting silhouette. And for that, I'm just painting. I'm not using the eraser. I'm just painting with white because I can always erase that out later with pure white. Oh, here's another thing you can do in digital painting that you can't do in traditional painting. You can just select colors using your magic wand and then mess with them using adjustments. So if I'm having trouble kind of picking a color for a certain region, I can just use my magic wand with contiguous. I'm going to set it to 32, it's default. Select it can zoom in on it and I can just use my hue saturation and play with a lot of different color options in real time. Ooh, let's get that hot pink in there. And remember this is just on top of my base painting layer so I'm not really risking anything. Just trying to go with it. Steal from that, work on top of it. Remember, grays are very powerful as well. Even when you're trying to do something bright and fauvist and expressionist in color, without those grays and darks, it can end up looking really flat and just not as visually, even as colorful, because you need the contrast to really bring that out.
almost there. It's just a few areas I'm not as fond of. Now, I kind of love this method. I haven't tried painting this way before, but what's nice about it is it kind of challenges me to make every every area of the painting interesting to my own eye. So I don't have that same problem like I did with the base painting and the tail of what do I do with the uninteresting parts. It's kind of the challenge to make everything a little bit more compelling. If I find a color I like, I can find ways to bring that into other places. So I think that's going to be in the next refined paint layer. Because remember, you can have as many refined paint layers as you like. I'm just kind of finding my way here. Finding the palette that's going to be best. Figuring out the approach. And thinking about how I can make it look more and more like this. And less and less like all the images that are already out there. Now, there's nothing in refined painting. Since you've already filled everything with your base painting, you don't necessarily need to make sure you cover everything. But it's generally good practice to go for a certain amount of finish with each approach. So I'm trying to resolve any shapes that I think need resolving. And as my colors kind of weaken because they're all blurred on top of each other, I go back to my pure colors in my palette and reassert them. And now I have more to work with. 